This is the Bates Bobcast, our weekly podcast where we take a look at the week that was in Bates Athletics. My name is Aaron Morse, and this week we're previewing National Girls and Women in Sports Day with Bates softball senior Kirsten Pelletier. Plus, the skiing teams host the Bates Carnival this weekend, and swimming and diving prevailed at the WPI Invitational. All that and more coming up on the Bates Bobcast. <laughs> The men's basketball team got the week started with an 88-42 win over Maine Maritime Tuesday at Alumni Gym. The Special Olympics Club hosted the JFM Navigators for a halftime basketball game. And after the Bobcats wrapped up their win over the Mariners, we caught up with Bobcat guard and president of the Special Olympics Club, Billy LaHart. Billy, you got a huge ovation from the Navigators when you came in the game. Tell us about your relationship with them. Well, the Special Olympics Club, uh, awesome group we have here at Bates. And I was really happy we were able to get this, this night uh, prepared for these guys tonight. Uh, we did a soccer halftime game in the fall. Uh, you know, they're just an awesome group. The Special Olympics are really, you know, encapsulate everything that sports should be about. And, you know, we're really proud that we have a partnership with the Navigators here at Bates. They're a great group. When did you first get involved with the relationship with the Navigators? My freshman year, actually. I yeah. was at the club fair, uh, and I was approached by... Adelaide, who was on the field hockey team, and got involved. We did soccer practices, basketball. Uh, we're really involved with that group. They also do like a ton of community service in the you know Lewiston Auburn area. So uh, you know, being a part of that group and having other volunteers at, at Bates get involved has uh, been a really special part of my Bates experience. How did it yeah. feel to hear that loud ovation when you checked in? It felt great. I knew I knew it was them. You know that. <laughs> They really have my back, and, and you know we have theirs, so it, it's really awesome to have all of them come out for th this game and show them a win and stuff, have them involved. It was, it was really special. When you were in high school, did you do anything with the Special Olympics, or was this kind of new for you when you arrived at Bates? This was, this was new for me. Yeah. I, a little bit. There were a few opportunities you know, as I grew up through you know, community youth sports, things like that. Uh, but what I saw that, that Bates had uh, you know, this opportunity laid out for students to get involved with Special Olympics, I had to take advantage. And uh, you know, as, as events like this are awesome for, for the program because you know, students who come out to support our team can see how good of a time it is. And uh, you know, it just adds to uh, how great of a time it is for everybody. And obviously getting some playing time, nice give and go there with David. That was really special. Yeah, David had, he had my back right there. Everybody got involved there at the end. Those are the types of wins that you know, really are just so much fun to be a part of. Uh, you know, 1 through 15, we have guys ready to step up. Um, you know, everybody supports each other, so I'm really excited to see what we got in this home stretch of the season. I think we're going to do something really special. Sounds good, Billy. Yeah. Thanks so much. Hey, great to be here. Victory. Real yeah, pleasure. Absolutely. Thanks so much. The women's and men's basketball teams both dropped games to Kobe and Bowden over the weekend, moving the women's record to 9-10 and overall and 1-5 and in NESCAC play. The men are currently 10-9 and and 2-4 and in NESCAC action. The women get five straight home games to end the regular season, including three this week. Bates is 6-2 and at home this year. Meanwhile, the men are on the road the rest of the regular season, with a pair of key games at Connecticut College and Trendy this weekend. The skiing teams had a strong second day at the Kobe Carnival, jumping from 9th place to 7th out of 15 schools overall. Senior Captain Michael Cooper tied teammate Joe Gillis for 21st in the Giant Slalom on Friday before he surged to a 12th place showing in the Slalom on Saturday. This year started off really strong for me with the Harvard Carnival. Um, ended up 12th in the Slalom and then had one of my better GS results as well. So it was a really strong start, something I tend not to have until the end of the season. <laughs> kind of saving everything for the last, like all the good performances. But yeah, it's been a really strong start of the season. Um, I'm pretty lucky too because... Both the men and women's team are exceptionally fast this year, yeah. and so I'm really excited to see that, and I'm really happy I'm back for this final year. I mean, even though it is my fifth year. Um, but, yeah, the teams are really strong, so I'm excited to, for the last three carnivals coming up. What is it like being a fifth-year senior here on campus? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's definitely a little weird. Um, not having my like matriculating class with mm -hmm. me is definitely a little strange, but I have a ton of friends in the class of 2020, so mm -hmm. it makes it a lot of fun still. So um, it's good to be back. I'm definitely a little bit busy. I'm also doing an internship as well, so I'm doing about 15 to 20 hours of that on top of the full class load and um, and skiing. So it definitely gets a little busy, but it's nice to have that kind of connection back to like the outside world as well. Well, tell us about the internship. Yeah, so this past um, fall, to make up for the semester that I had missed out, mm -hmm. uh, missed out on, I had to um, take this previous fall off. So I took fall of 2019 off, mm -hmm. and I got an internship down in Boston. So I was down there for about six months working on that, and then. Um, coming back here wanted to stay on just doing some part-time work so got a they were able to you know get me there and give me like a small like 
a few tasks like to work on weekly and whatnot just mm-hmm. to keep my foot in the door for the company. Okay, yeah. nice. Is that something you could see yourself working at after you graduate? Or? Yeah, so I'm, yeah. Def- I'm working towards like a full-time position sure. there. It's nice. nice to have that. Um, they've given me like the unofficial, mm-hmm. official like offer. Right. Um, so I haven't signed anything yet, okay. but it's nice to have that comfort going in. It allows me to at least take a lot of that stress out and actually focus on the skiing too because I want to obviously have a very successful season. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's nice to have that kind of on the back burner. So you, when you were in Boston, were you able to train at all, or how did that go, kind of? Um, I kept up on my dryland training. Okay. Um, yeah. Obviously, no training on snow. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I t- came up a few weekends to just free ski around, mm-hmm. um, and so you know got on snow a little bit, but definitely didn't have as much preparation as I'd hoped for. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so definitely came a little bit behind the pace on that, but. But got um, to the fast start, so... Yeah, know, yeah, 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 it's, <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> having as much training and, uh, yeah, I mean, just having the team so fast this year and yeah. such a successful team right now has really been pushing me as well. So, I mean, we have some really fast skiers right now, like Ari, um, right. as well as Joe Gillis and Ryan Claremont putting in a huge result this weekend, starting bib 71, moving all the way to 20, mm-hmm. uh, I think 26th. So that was a big move. So, I mean, all these guys are pushing me so hard. So it's like every day I'm out on the hill, um, it's it's a lot of fun just because there's so much competition. Well, I saw one event, five top 30 finishes for the men. I mean, that's not something that we've seen, right? Yeah, I mean, we've gone, we've built the program so much over the last mm-hmm. three years, and Michaela's done a great job recruiting and getting us training space and giving us um, pretty much all the opportunity to have that much success. I mean, it went to a point two years ago where we it would be lucky if we had two guys in the top 60 mm-hmm. at the end of the day, even making second run. And now that we have, you know, can get at least four to five in the top 30 is absolutely incredible and it's really putting us um against or up against a lot of these top tier schools like uvm unh dartmouth and so you know we're still gunning for that top position but we've had it's been a great season with these guys you touched on the dry land training how do you do that for alpine skiing i know how nordic skiers do it how do, how do alpine skiers do it yeah, so it's uh, definitely more focused on a lot of um, weight training. Okay. So a lot in the fall, um, they'll do like captain's practices, like in the gym. So it'll be kind of like a mix between cardio and strength uh, strength training. Um, definitely a little bit heavier on the strength training. It is a really interesting thing because no matter like really how much you work out, like you get on the hill the first time and you're going to be absolutely gassed <laughs> regardless. <laughs> yeah. It's just like a different, very different muscle group. But um, yeah, so just like a lot of um, just in strength, like or at least uh, weight training. Nice. Bates Carnival this weekend, home, home home mountain, right? How excited are you for this? I'm really excited. This is going to be my last um, at home carnival mm-hmm. for like my collegiate career, so I'm really looking forward to it. My dad's actually flying out from California to watch, so I'm really excited about that. Um, we are expecting, I think, a little bit of weather. I think it's supposed to snow about like six or so inches on Friday, but you know, in years past. Um, this whole team does fairly well in really rough conditions. I mean, even this past weekend wasn't, like, the most ideal of conditions, and our guys were still um, putting in the top 30 from really, really late bid positions. So I'm really excited. I know this team can really, like, persevere through these, like, tough conditions, so I'm excited. And I know the entire team's super excited to have it back at yeah. Sunday River one more time. So You touched on the late bid positions. Mm-hmm. That's something I've noticed where it – it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy sometimes if the course is all torn up and you're not a high seed because you've had to wait for everyone to go it, it makes it a lot harder doesn't it yeah and that's and that's part of the coming out of the east circuit especially as like a first year um mm-hmm. on any of teams so you start um in previous seasons you get carnival points which help your position if you have top 30s right. um but if you're not ranked in the top 30 you don't get that early draw and so then it's ranked on our fist points which are accumulated over the last like basically our entire career sure. even through high school um but yeah so yeah some of our guys will be like or have been starting um pretty far back in the seed but I, i'm absolutely impressed by mm-hmm. how much like grit that they have to like start in some of those rough positions i mean when you're talking especially in the gs the men will run after the women and so oh, yeah. you know it'd be the 80 women that go first and then on that same course the men will start so when these guys are starting bib you know 60 or 70 they're really starting like bib 150 like 160 and so it's really cool to see like how much um they like how much effort they're putting in right now and also um yeah like i said like the grit that it takes to you know run that deep in the pack but obviously like our team has been doing really well this year with those conditions so well you touched on the snow in the forecast when's the ideal time for it to snow probably not (laughs) during the event obviously but like a day before two days um we generally don't want as much snow um just on race day because like i said like the course will break down if the snow is softer so Mm -hmm. um ideally it would be completely ice 
and so there'd be like no marks on the hill. I mean, yeah. we love like we love the ice so much. Okay. Um, I mean, we'll tune up the skis and everything mm-hmm. for to get that um, to get the nice edge for the ice icy conditions. Yeah. Um, so this weekend should be interesting to see like how the course will break down. Um, it definitely will break down a little bit, um, but again, it's this is it's ski racing. Like yeah. that stuff happens all the time, yeah. and like conditions won't be ideal some days. So these guys will definitely rip it from the back, and I'm excited. I was talking to Kaylin Woods on the Nordic skiing team. How much does she, because she's been to NCAA is just like mm-hmm. you, but how much does she look at like the standing or the ranks, the points throughout the year? Do you ever look at those or do you not? She, she says she avoids them at all costs. <laughs> I mean, I'd be lying to say that I wasn't just laser focused on them all the time. You are, okay. Well, I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's pretty fun just because the E circuit is so competitive. Mm-hmm. And so this stuff, like, the rankings change around all the time. Yeah. I mean, some days, like, you'll have. Um, you'll have someone that maybe has been doing like maybe like consistently top twenty, and all of a sudden throws in like a random like top eight mm-hmm. result, and that that will mess up the that will mess up the rankings quite a bit right. too. Um, it is one thing; it's hard to separate yourself from that and try to just focus on the skiing, um, just because it is such like a results based yeah. um, sport, and so you know it's it's hard to separate but, like myself at least um, from those rankings. But you know when it comes down to it, like. You just got to kick out of the start gate and make it from point A to point B in the fastest time possible. So, yeah. Well, for someone like you who does pay attention to it, break down your chances right now, in your opinion. <laughs> My chances? <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it's hard, again, to, yeah. like, line myself up of where the rankings are right now. Yeah. Um, usually you need at least top, like, two top ten results top to make NCAAs. Um, they take 16 from the east and 16 from the west. Yeah. Um, so I'm, like, right on the bubble, I think, right oh, now. Mm-hmm. But, again, like, there's... I mean, even if I'm on the bubble right now, the results from this weekend and the, the next two following weekends could be completely random. And so, try, again, try not to yeah. focus on it, but it's still <laughs> in the back of my head. <laughs> well, and being on the, your home mountain has to be comforting for this weekend, at least in terms of you, you know this, of course. Yeah, it's it's nice. I really I like I know all the train on the on yeah. Sunday Rivers Hill, and so it'll be nice. That'll definitely give myself and all of our teammates an advantage, just because we we're up there almost every day training. Um, so yeah, we're really excited for this hill. I think historically, as a team, we've done pretty well, right. like on our home hill, as you know, any home team will have. Um, but yeah, we're getting really excited for this. Great. What are your thoughts on the season so far? Your your fifth year as a Bobcat? I mean, I'm just really happy I got this the like, last final year. Yeah. Um, NCAA was generous enough to grant me the redshirt year when I had when I was having back surgery, um, and so you know, having this final year and already starting off very successfully is it means a lot to me. Just because this has been, you know, Maine has been my home for the last, I guess, five years now. Um, so I'm just really happy that I got this opportunity to race in my final year. And it's going to be really hard to say goodbye to this team, for sure. I mean, we built such good relationships. And I really love this group of people, especially right now. And even given the success, like, it's such a competitive group right now. And it's mm-hmm. so much fun, like, getting out there every day. Because it's up to, like, anyone. Like, yeah. training times are all... Um, you know, different people like win training every day, so it's it's a lot of fun. So I'm gonna miss it a lot. All right, Michael Cooper, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks so much, Aaron. In Nordic skiing, senior captain Kaylin Woods continued her remarkable run, leading the Bobcats in both events yet again, taking a season best 14th in both the classical technique race and the freestyle race. And Kaylin Woods is our female Bobcat of the week. So this weekend we're at Quarry Road um, in Waterville, which is the home course for Colby. Um, I've actually spent a lot of time there this winter uh, because of the lack of snow. Um, I spent a lot of time there over Christmas break as well as leading up to the Colby Colby Carnival. We traveled up there a few times to ski the course um, and do some intervals on it to just kind of get a feel for how it flows and kind of what it's like to do um, intensity pieces on that course. Um, We were on a modified 2.5K loop. Um, so short, we did four laps for the 10 K, um, and it basically climbs and then you come down some S turns and then go around a field and then you climb again and you do that two more times. So, um, it's fun. I love climbing. So that boded well for me. Um, and that it was really awesome. I mean, you're on a two and a half K loop and it's right, right everyone can see you kind of the whole time and people were lined up all along the the course which was really fun and so now this weekend hosting the carnival black mountain how how is your home course who which you actually i guess don't practice on that much i guess compared to colby um yeah so we are racing at black mountain um in rumford maine which is our home course we don't train there that often because it's like an hour away 
um, but they have a really amazing race course um, or race courses uh, up there for us to race on. And we've been up there the past two Sundays skiing the courses there. And um, it's yesterday we were up there and it looks awesome. I mean, the volunteers and the um, Black Mountain volunteers are amazing and they've been putting in a lot of work um, to host this carnival, which is really exciting. So, And then yeah. in terms of the conditions, what is it? How does it compare, I guess, to what you were just experienced? Um, so from my understanding this weekend, I think that we'll have a full 5K course. Yeah. So for more, we'll do a 15K classic on Friday and then a 5K skate on Saturday. Right. So for the 15K, for the women anyways, we'll do three laps of the 5K. Um, and then we'll do just one lap of the 5K for the 5K skate, obviously. So It's interesting because, you know, obviously every weekend you're doing a skate and a classic, but the distances are always kind of mixing you know, together a little bit. How do you kind of prepare differently depending on the distances you're preparing to skate? Um, or ski, I should say. <laughs> yeah, it's – I mean, you become so used to it, uh-huh. uh, especially like over the past four years racing – um, every week we do one day of, um, intensity or intervals and we'll usually do those dependent on what race we kind of are racing first. So like this week we're doing, I'm, this week is actually a little bit different. Like we're, we're doing skate intensity tomorrow and then we'll race the skate 5k, which is obviously a lot shorter than a 15k classic race. Yeah. Um, so just to like get your muscles kind of ready for that. Um, cause the 5k, obviously you need to. You need to be ready to go right out of the start. Where in the 15K Classic, you have a little bit more time to like find your groove, especially with a mass start like we're doing for Classic. It always the beginning is always a little tricky because everyone's starting at the right. same time. So um, that's yeah. Well, we've I've talked about the novels mass starts. Some some skiers love them, some don't like them. What what are your thoughts on when it's a mass start? Um, I really enjoy them. Mm-hmm. It's really fun to kind of start with everyone and know where you are the whole race so um you know whatever place you finish is the place you finish as opposed to like when you finish you might in a individual start you might act not know where you place right away mm-hmm. just because there's still more people finishing right. um this year I haven't had like the best luck with starting cause starting is always a tricky mm-hmm. thing when everyone's going all at once because Especially in a classic race, since there's tracks, you have all these tracks, and then they come kind of come together, and it gets the tracks. There's like usually when you start, there's like five or six tracks wide, and then it funnels down to four, and then three, and then throughout the race course, it's usually two or three um, tracks. And so that always is tricky to try and maneuver that. But I really like them. I think it's really fun to kind of be skiing with someone the whole time. Yeah, the start can almost dictate how the rest of the race goes a little bit, right? Yeah, I mean, especially in in races and on race courses that you know have tricky starts or you start going on a downhill and then you have like a sweeping corner that like you're on the inside you're on the outside some people you know fall you know you get tangled up so it's always tricky and it's but it's really fun and kind of tactical at the same time so you're a senior now right you're you're on the you're a captain again Um, can you believe it's already senior year for you (laughs) Uh, no, it's kind of crazy. Um, it's exciting. Obviously it's really exciting to have the Bates carnival coming up this weekend. Um, last one. And the last time we had Bates carnival, well, we had one last year, but my freshman year, I remember it was just like super exciting. Um, it wasn't the, it was the last one, my freshman year this time it's not, but Mm -hmm. it'll be really fun to have, um, have it be during the school year kind of when students are at school so they have the opportunity to come up and watch if they want to kind of see what see what we do every weekend Um, because in the past it's been over February break so there's not a lot of students on campus Um, but yeah it's really exciting it's it's fun to be a senior kind of have all these lasts but also like enjoy it my my years blend together (laughs) but when you were a first year did did say James win Bates Carnival was that that was your yeah that was my freshman year and we did really really well as a team um so that was really exciting and it's always just really fun to be at Black Mountain where I mean the volunteers there are amazing and they put together such a great race and they are so supportive of Bates and every other team that's there as well but it's a really cool atmosphere and really really fun do you have the goal in the back of your mind to you know win one of these carnivals yourself or is that not something you concern yourself with necessarily I mean it's always like A goal, I don't know if it's so much as a goal, just like a what if. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it'd be amazing. It's so cool. One of my friends who's raced, who I raced with when she was in Maine, who's now skis from Middlebury, 
she just has won the past three carnival races which is so cool oh, wow. to see um to see another main girl granted she's at middlebury right, right. now but <laughs> to see that happen so it's always like a wow what if that happened that'd be really cool um i don't know if it's a goal i think i want to like meet my first goal like my goals first and then like yeah. oh winning a carnival is always like in the back of my mind but I never really um I don't know. It's never really crossed my mind as like a huge goal of mine. Sure. Well, yeah. obviously you've been to NCAAs you know, throughout your career here. What have those experiences been like for you? And I know the rankings determine kind of where, if you go back again, how much of an eye do you keep on that throughout the year? I try not to look at it too much because uh-huh. I think it will, it just like gets stressful also. Yeah. Like it's so hard to like dictate how people do and some people could have like one weekend have a really really good race that puts them the way at the top and you know you just kind of have to be like okay that is what it is and kind of work from that um so I don't look at them too much just because it's stressful and then it makes me like when I see a result one weekend I'm like oh shoot I I, I need to do better than this or something like that so just try and take it like race by race um as opposed to like stalking the standings so much right thinking top 30 each time yeah (laughs) exactly top 30 will get me points so that's awesome um and then obviously like working from my 14th places and working up from that because i'll only better my points if i do better than 14th so well as a senior how do you see the you know some of the younger skiers shaping up so far it's super exciting we have a really young team this year a pretty big team but really young and they're all excited about it and it's really cool to see everyone like working so hard and coming together and just like really putting in the work to you know get the carnival results we want like last weekend we were sixth as a women's team overall which was one of our team goals that we hadn't quite met yet this season but it was really really fun to see that all come together and kind of like be like okay we can do it we know how to get there um which is great All right, Kaylin Woods, our female Bobcat of the Week. Thanks so much. Thank you. The swimming and diving squads both took first place out of five teams at the WPI Invitational with a number of impressive performances along the way. Sophomore Andrew Hall won the 100-yard IM in a team record time of 52.40 seconds. Hall also finished second in the 200-yard freestyle, and he is our male Bobcat of the Week. Yeah, it was pretty cool. uh, I've been keeping an eye on the breaststroke and IM records. And Alex Bedard set the record last year at this same meet, and I was like, wow, that, damn, that's fast. I want to do that, or better. And I did, which was awesome. Mm-hmm. And the meet itself is a little different from a typical uh, dual meet you might have, right? It was um, a lot of spring events. What's that like to participate in? Uh, it's unique because no, no other conference really does this, and uh, the NESCAC has 50s, and this meet is actually cool because it has 25s. And I actually only did 125, unfortunately, but it's it's a lot of fun, yeah. So what makes the 25s? I mean, it's over in like a snap of the finger, basically, right? Yeah, you're you're done. You're like, why why did I do that? What's the point? I'm not tired at all. I just want to keep going. But it's a it's a fun, short, quick race. Everyone's so close to each other. And then as a sophomore, um, you know, what have you sort of, sort of learned from your first year last year on campus that you've applied to this year about what it takes to succeed in the program? Um, that it's not really an individualized sport, although many people may think swimming is. It's not. Um, when you're going for your team, it's easier to swim faster, and that's what I really realized from uh, from last year. And th- I didn't really feel that in club swimming or in the past. So that really motivates me to swim faster. Great. Um, so what first appealed to you about Bates when you're looking at colleges? I actually wasn't interested in Bates f- at first. And then I, uh, my dad was like, Lily Scott, she's also from my hometown, she's also from the, on the swim team. And uh, my dad was like, Lily, Lily goes to Bates. You should look at that too. It's the same conference as Bowdoin because I was looking at Bowdoin oh. too. I did not like Bowdoin at all. <laughs> and so... I looked at Bates and loved it. I love the team. Um, the team is really why I came here. The campus is awesome, and academics are awesome too. So, what distinguishes it sounds like is your initial impressions of the kind of the guys on the team. Yeah, definitely. On my recruiting trip, I came in January of 2018, mm. and yeah, the, I went to a few other 
um, recruiting trips to other schools and I did not see the same thing. The team aspect is just, it's really cool. It's, everyone's really close. It's great, yeah. Take me through the uh, final duel meet there against Colby because that's been the talk of uh, everything, right? The comeback of team made, what was that yeah, like that was, from your perspective? That was wild. I, I didn't think we were gonna do it <laughs> and other people definitely didn't think we were gonna do it. Uh, I don't, it doesn't matter who it was. I don't really remember who was saying we're not going to do it. But I'm like, it, it's, there's still a chance. And down to the last three events, including the last diving event. And uh, we got one, two in the diving, one, two in the 200 IM. And then that brought us down to one point behind Colby. And then winning the freestyle relay was insane. Because it was like back and forth who was in the lead. It, yeah, it was, and you were sick. part of the IM race, right? I was. I got second in the 200 IM. Yeah. Right before the freestyle relay. Yeah. What's it like going up against like a teammate like you know Peter Corey and his his speed in the IM also? Well, Peter's got the record there, and <laughs> I I know I had to lead the first hundreds. I'm like, let's see if I can keep it. But I was I was dying. I'm like, Peter, Peter's got it. He'll right. win it. I'll, uh, he's another Bates guy. I'll let him. I'll let him take that. But I can't let Colby right. Colby catch up. Yeah. Because the one-two nature was very important for points. Yeah. Right? yeah. Mm-hmm. It's first is like eleven nine points, and then it drops down to four, I believe, mm-hmm. which is a big difference. Next tax coming up. What are your thoughts? Um, you know, obviously you competed last year at conferences. Yeah, I'm I'm pumped. We got a bunch of new freshmen like Nate Barry, John Marcolina. They're all beasts in the pool. And I think we're going to do better than last year. And uh, we got a lot of depth and talent that's really showing up. It was really evident in uh, the WPI meet. And so, yeah, the relays are I'm excited for the most. And I believe that we can send a few to nationals. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah, that would, that'd be something, certainly. I mean, what are you going to be? Do you know what races you're doing yet, or is that kind of to be determined? Um... I'm doing the 200 IM, 400 IM, and 200 breaststroke, mm-hmm. and I don't know which relays yet. I know the medley relays, hopefully, and uh, 800 free relay, and then I don't know about the other two, the 400 free or 200 free relay. So obviously, yeah. as, a, as a guy who does the IM, you have to know all four strokes really well. What's what's maybe your favorite thing? My favorite is, I don't know, probably... <laughs> Butterfly, because it's the first one, and you're not as tired doing the rest. Yeah, butterfly is but pretty tough, though, right? I mean, it's butterfly is tough. You yeah. use like every muscle in your body trying to yeah. keep yourself breathing and surviving through the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> when did you first start swimming, kind of growing up competitively? Um, I was on a beach club team. I started when I was like four or so, and then joined a club team. Um, more competitive club, t- club team when I was seven, mm. and then um, and yeah, until now. Is, was it is swimming big in where you grew up in New Jersey or? It, yeah, it's really big. Surprisingly, because yeah. it's a small state, but it's very competitive. Like high school, some states don't have very competitive high school, but high school in New Jersey is fast. And I remember going to states and not even being able to make finals but um, I compared it to like uh, other state swimming and I'm like oh that's not that fast I don't know New Jersey has some kids that pop out of nowhere that are fast and some go to Cal Mm. and other big D1 schools that are insane yeah so that helped prepare you pretty well for the transition to college the competition definitely did yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. well what are your thoughts on the season so far and any you know any goals you have specifically i mean you touched on a couple in mind you know for for next year. um goals i have some pretty big goals yeah specifically making nationals mm-hmm. um but overall the season has been it's been it's been exciting mm-hmm. this season has been exciting definitely um it felt like I was thinking about this this morning. Test set felt like just a week ago, and it, we're already starting to taper. Right. It's going by fast, but it's exciting because we want we are pretty much undefeated except for the scrimmage against Dartmouth. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, otherwise we won every um, meet this year. As opposed to last year, we didn't get the CBB champ, and this year we did with the Bowden Colby wins, which is exciting. Yeah. 
in particular the Colby meet. Very exciting. Andrew Hall, male Bobcat of the Week. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. On the women's side, the Bobcats won 11 races, with sophomore Maya Reynoso Williams winning the 100 yard freestyle and placing second in the 200 free. She also helped Bates win the 200 free relay. Maya, you know, the WPI meet always kind of interesting. It's after the dual meets, but before NESCAX. How do you kind of approach that? Because it's a little bit different from what you are typically doing, maybe in other types of the meets throughout the year. So we actually get to sign up for our own events for WPI. Like dual meets, our coach puts us in, like, this is what you need to swim in order for us to beat this team. Um, but we get a little bit more freedom for WPI. So um, last year, going into my first WPI invite, he w- came up to me and he was like, you know, I don't want to tire you out and have you get bored of your normal events. So switch it up. Um, so the last two years for WPI, I've tried to add in the one fly, which I don't normally do at dual meets. I'm more of a freestyler. Um, but I also like to keep events that are actually going to gonna help me, like at NESCAC. So I did do the one free and two free. Um, a lot of people do 25s because it's really fun, but it's not necessarily something that you can go to NESCACs in. So um, I do kind of avoid those events. <laughs> Yeah. So you definitely use it as a preparation a bit for NESCACs with a little bit of creativity thrown yeah, in. Yeah, definitely. Just to switch it up a little bit. Um, I don't – I wouldn't say that I get bored of my, my main events, um, but it is always good to keep your other strokes up and just – be able to do anything at all times so then do you form your own relay teams just whoever you want to be on the relay with you or how does that go a lot of the time especially for like the fun 100 relays which is a 25 of each stroke per person which we also don't do at nescax that's just a wpi thing very fun um people will do classes so they'll have like a senior relay team versus a junior relay team versus a sophomore and freshman um, so they get to form those. I just signed up for the two free relay, and coach put me in whatever relay he wanted me to be in. The 100 relay then, so 25 each. Mm-hmm. So that's one direction across the pool. Yeah. So how does that go in terms was, of? So there's blocks on either side, <laughs> there are. Okay. and then you have yeah. two people on one side, two people on, people on the other nice. side. Yeah, it goes <laughs> is, by very quick. Is that fun to watch? <laughs> oh, yeah, super yeah. fun. <laughs> it goes by so fast. It's really exciting. And then so between now and NESCAX, obviously the word taper is mm-hmm. often used. For yes. those who don't know, how is that approached in terms of tapering? Um, I think a lot of people approach it in different ways. Mm. It's definitely something physical. Like we go down in yardage as we approach NESCACs because we don't want to be too tired out. Um, but there's also a mental component to it. Like you're getting ready for your end of season meet. And this is like what the whole season's been building up towards. Um, and for some people, it also means you stop lifting towards the end. Um, so I stopped lifting last week, and now I'm just doing swimming in the afternoons, no mornings. Um, but, yeah, it's it's just, like, mentally and physically resting your body just enough to be prepared to go super fast at the end of the season. Nice. And then um, for you, you got to experience not only NESCAX last year, but NCAAs yeah, that as was a really first fun. year. Tell me about that experience. What was that like? Um, that was super fun. We... It was only women who went last year, which Mm -hmm. was a little disappointing for the men's team, but it was super fun for me as part of the women's team. It was nine of us, and we went to practice together every day for a whole month, and then in the end, we left campus for a whole week together, and the meet was super fun. All of the races were really exciting. We all came back um, All-American, honorable mention, or All-Americans, which was really great. Um, but yeah, I think the whole national team got really tight and that was just a really fun time. We also got to be with both of the coaches, Vanessa and, um, Peter, because a lot of the time, like in normal season, Vanessa will do sprint and PC will do endurance. And so I'm always with PC and endurance. and I never really see Vanessa. And I got a lot closer with Vanessa towards the end of season because she was at my practices every day. And she's got to be a great resource because she swam here all American Mm -hmm. herself, right? Yeah, definitely. I really love having her on deck. Also, just the presence of like a woman coach, which Mm -hmm. is like in club, it wasn't like there were a lot of women coaches, but on my club team, it was all male coaches. Mm. And um, that was definitely something that I was looking for as I was looking for college teams. And I was like, am I going to have like a female coach on deck? So it's really great to have her as a role model. Well, yeah, you touched on looking for colleges mm-hmm. uh, just a couple years ago when you were doing that. So yeah. tell me about that process. What was that like and what made Bates the place for you? Um, so I wanted to swim D3. Like that was very clear for me. Um, And I wanted to be pretty close to home. I'm from Somerville, Massachusetts, so I wanted to be, like, within driving distance. Um, And I basically just looked at, like, almost every single NESCAC school. Um, I'm a big fan of the NESCAC schools. And Bates stuck out to me. 
I really liked the campus, very pretty campus. I really liked short term mm -hmm. um, because a lot of other schools have like J term, which is a really great experience, but that happens to be in the middle of swim season. So like if you wanted to leave campus or something, that's not, well, it is something you could do, but it's not something that you would ideally want to do. So I really liked short term. Um, and I loved the coaches here. Mm -hmm. Like I loved the coaches here so much. You, you couldn't convince me to go anywhere else based on the coaches. What makes them so good in your opinion? Um, the attitude, I yeah. think. It's just like all – it's just like about like loving swimming yeah. is what – is like PC used to say like a happy swimmer is a fast swimmer. And I think that's like the best mentality to have about swimming. Especially, yeah, you just like don't want to get stressed out about it or have it be like a job. Right. Because it's something that's really fun that's like supplementing your academic experience at Bates. So I know there's a lot there there are a lot of early morning practice at least at some there point are. during the year, but they make it fun at some point. Oh like. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and just getting up with like the whole team mm. and like knowing that you're doing it together. I also just like being like awake before everybody else and like getting a head start on the day. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, and your thoughts on um, you know, NESCAC's coming up and what some goals you have in, in your mind perhaps? Yeah, um, I think it would be really great to get all of our relays to nationals again. That'd be really exciting. Um, at the beginning of the season, we talked about like a team goal of getting top three at NESCACs. So that would be really great to see if we got there. We have a really strong team this year. So that's really what we're hoping for. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Myra Reynoso Williams, thanks so much for joining us on the Bobcast. Appreciate it. Thank you. The women's squash team defeated Franklin and Marshall 8-1, to while the men fell 9 to nothing in the final match for both teams before their NASCAC tournaments. The women compete at NASCACs this weekend at Wesleyan, while the men travel to Bowdoin next weekend. In track and field, the women and men prepared for the main state meet last weekend, with both teams sending athletes to Tufts and the women also sending athletes to Open New England. Highlights included the women's distance medley relay team taking fourth place out of 15 teams, all of them Division One or two squads. Amanda Kaufman becoming the second Bates woman ever to break the nine-second barrier in the 60-meter hurdles, and John Rex winning the weight throw at Tufts, defeating the runner-up from MIT by more than two feet. This Saturday, the Bates Department of Athletics is hosting a special free event in the Gray Cage for girls five and up in honor of National Girls and Women in Sports Day. Senior softball pitcher Kirsten Pelletier is one of many student-athlete volunteers. Um, I think personally, I have really found myself um, in the game of softball and in athletics in general. So I think providing that platform for younger girls um, to really find themselves um, through athletics um, is what I really get out of it and what I really enjoy the most um, from this event. And I also think um, just all of women's athletics coming together is such a really cool um, environment that we don't get a lot at Bates because um, just because we're all so busy when we're in season. Um, just coming together with other female athletes from other teams is really um, empowering. Growing up, um, what first inspired you to get into sports? I really didn't fall in love with sports until like middle school. Um, I was like a really quiet kid um, until I kind of really found myself in athletics where I was able to find um, like my confidence and something that gave me goals to really strive for. Um, so once I found that, I was a lot more outgoing and competitive and things like that. So any prominent, um, you know, female athletes that you looked up to? Well, Jenny Finch, of course, because she played softball and she was an amazing pitcher. Um, but also Mia Hamm and just other Serena Williams, like so many other prominent female athletes um, that were so good when I was little. You, as a softball player here. You know, what have you seen, you know, in terms of, like, your growth um, through these, four, you know, three-plus years? I think I've grown so much. Um, I think I came in, again, as, like, a quiet freshman who, like, didn't really have a place at Bates yet. Um, and I think being on the softball team really gave me those friends and that, um, those, that balance that I needed to combat with, like, rigorous academics I um, softball's always been like the place where I can go when I was stressed and um, having that throughout my college years has been so much more than like words could ever ever say what do you hope uh, girls get out of this event coming up on Saturday I really hope that they they're able to find um, something they love and something that like allows them to be themselves um, I think so many women athletes at Bates play their sport for a different reason. And I really hope that just like through this event, um, a lot of girls are able to communicate why they love their sport um, to these younger girls. And um, 
I hope it kind of makes a connection as to um, some of the younger girls as they grow up and maybe be like, I, I want to be like them. Next time on the Bates Bobcast, we'll recap the main state meet for women's and men's track and field, plus a look back at four big NASCAT games for the basketball teams and a recap of this weekend's Bates Carnival. All that and more next time on the Bates Bobcast. <laughs> Bye.